The Bad Batch is directed and written by Anna Lily Amarpour and it stars Suki Waterhouse, Jason Momoa, and Keanu Reeves and someone else I don't want to spoil for you guys. This movie takes place in a dystopian wasteland in Texas and is set partially in a community of cannibals. We follow this woman who is captured and then due to some events happening that I don't want to spoil, she finds this very different community and she becomes intertwined with Jason Momoa and his character's journey in this movie. And this one is definitely a thinker. It's a slow burner for Sure, it's a commentary, but also has aspects of horror and black comedy within it. Think of this movie as the following. An LSD drug-infused marriage between Texas Chainsaw Massacre, with much less horror, let's admit it, and Mad Max Fury Road. Anna Lily Armapur also directed A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, and that's definitely a fantastic movie, and if you haven't seen it, go watch it. I'm not telling you anything about the movie, see that film without knowing anything about it. And she has a great voice as a director, a voice that she displays fully here. This is far from being conventional storytelling, far from being conventional directing. For the first half an hour of this movie, there's very little dialogue. In fact, throughout the whole film, there's very little dialogue that can seem meaningful. The dialogue in this film may seem, at points, some words that don't mean a thing, but as you capture the mentality of these characters, the world they are set in, you start realizing that things really are not good. None of these people can be considered mentally sane, in fact that's why they are part of the Bad Batch, people that have been expelled from the United States and are now roaming this wasteland. Suki Waterhouse is very good in this movie. Her performance is not necessarily what draws you into following this story, but this has such a fantastic world, such a fantastic building of different societies and such a great look at how our own society could be heading into. That immediately captures you and immerses you in this world that Anna Lily Amarpour is trying to ask you to go into. And she does that beautifully. There are many dreamlike sequences in this film. They are fantastic. Some more obvious than others. Trust me, I had to sit and think about this movie for about an hour, an hour and a half because I really wanted to get my thoughts across and not spoil anything. Also, this is a role for Jason Momoa that I think is fantastic. Again, his character doesn't have much dialogue. His character is not necessarily very likable. He's definitely not a good guy, but throughout the film you start to get to know him a little better. You start to get to know him as a person within the society that created him and not knowing anything else. You start to know a little bit about his past, and this is not a movie that spoon feeds you everything. It gives you a little bit to know of each character that matters to this story, and it definitely has some elements of Nicholas Winding Refn as far as working with characters. Characters in this movie aren't necessarily that well developed, let's say, because they work much more as examples, as metaphors. That's why I say it's a little bit of Nicholas Winding Refn, but it's not full on <laughs> Nicholas Winding Refn. The cinematography in this movie is stunning. There are shots that are so storytelling driven, and I adore that about this movie. The script is also fan. Fantastic, because again, it's not spoon-feeding you information, it's telling you this story but with enough information that you start to piece things together and think about things that happened previously in a film when a sudden reveal, let's say, even though there are necessary reveals in this movie, come in. And this is, again, such a fantastic world that was built so well captured to these characters, to their story. I only have two issues with this film, and that is one of the dream sequences that I spoke about previously, the not-so-subtle one. It has some special effects that are not the best. Definitely not the worst, especially for an indie film, but you can see them. And I also said the dialogue is very meaningful and not spoon feeding you information, but maybe some bits of dialogue that some characters spout out are not the best written. To me, they just didn't come across the best written dialogue. I can honestly say without spoiling that the ending may feel like a bit anticlimactic, but it really feeds into the story, it really feeds into what the director, and in this case also screenwriter, was trying to say 
all along and trying to make you see that perspective it has a very intelligent cultural and social commentary and that's one of the best aspects of this film and also let me put this picture right here if you know who that is but I've said this before and I'll say it again when you have such a unique voice such a unique style of director and a voice that just is unique to the story you are telling, to how you are telling your story. It's not what you are about, it's how you are about it. We have definitely seen desert locations in dystopian future movies before, but this is so different, and it's so different in what it's telling in itself. It's a very unique movie. It's not for everyone. I am sure of that. I am sure this movie will be divisive for people, maybe 50-50. It doesn't have the best ratings from what I heard, or the best reviews, but I love these thinking movies. I love movies that when they end, they leave me thinking about them, especially when I'm not sure if I like them or not. And now I am. I wasn't sure when I first finished, but now I am. When you have a movie that leaves you thinking about it and leaves you wanting to go back and see it again and again, because it's so fantastically well told of a story, that is the best kind of film. It's fantastically directed, in my opinion. It's got a very good script. I only have those two issues I told you about previously, but they don't deter away from this movie and from how deep this story is. It's got very good moments of comedy, very good moments of horror, definitely a thinker and a slow burner. The Bad Batch is one of the most unique films I have seen all year, and I want to see more from this director, and I want to see more roles like this for Jason Momoa, Keanu Reeves. The Bad Batch is absolutely a collector's item. What did you think of The Bad Batch, my beautiful geekies? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Do you like these unique told stories? Let me know in the comments below what is your favorite unconventional story in film. Let me know in the comments and as you go down there, check the description. There is a link to the beautiful Geeky Community Facebook group and I hope to see you there. Yesterday I uploaded my Spider-Man 2 review in anticipation for Homecoming. This Sunday I will upload my review for Spider-Man 3. And so until then, with many other reviews coming this week, you stay beautiful, you stay geeky, and if you haven't done so yet, click the subscribe button and the bell so it can be geeky united!